Hey guys, um, when I did my first Rare Games I Own video, I had a few extra clips left over. That first video was just getting a little bit long. Um, I figured, you know, I would save them and use them down the road. Um, well, down the road, I came a little bit sooner um, because I ended up getting a really rare game that I didn't think I was going to be able to find or get anytime soon. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'll put that really rare one at the end of this video and I'll mix in some new little clips that I'll film right now of some other rare games I have and then put in those few that didn't make it uh, into the first video. So um, yeah, here you go. This first game I got at a garage sale um, and when I found it I didn't really even know what I had gotten. Um, it was a mom and dad who were selling one of their kids you know, piles of crap and he had gone off to college or whatever, you know, like the classic story and they just didn't want the stuff around anymore. Um, they had some board games, a few, you know, video games and toys, but uh, they had a PS1 and about 10 or 15 games. And there was a few that were in pretty shitty condition, but there was like two that were in really nice condition. And one of those two happened to be Brigadine. Um, it is like in perfect condition. The, no marks on the disc, on the instruction booklet, you know, the case is great. Almost seems like the kid ripped off the plastic and maybe read the back of the case and was just like, oh my god, this isn't for me. Um, the Just on the back, it, it describes politics and war and turmoil over, you know, hundreds of years, so it's a little bit, uh, you know, uh, discerning to probably, like, a 12-year-old, so I'm not saying 12-year-olds are stupid or anything, just saying it's a little bit maybe uh, too much for the average <laughs> game player. Um, I knew that at least it was a RPG, and it was put out by Atlas at the time, um, and that meant, you know, to me, hey, that, that could be quality. I played some Atlas games and enjoyed them a lot. Um, now, when I got it, I think I paid about four bucks for it, because I bought three games, and I didn't pay more than, like, ten dollars for all three. Um, now it goes for anywhere around seventy to a hundred dollars or so, uh, I, when I got when I finally had checked the price on eBay, um, I had seen that there was some that came with a little map, and I opened mine up, and I was like, I don't remember seeing a map, and uh, I happened to find it in between a couple pages in the manual, just you know, nicely stuck in there. Um, so that definitely helps the value of it a little bit too. So um, difference of four dollars compared to a hundred bucks, I, I'll I'll take the four dollar garage sale find definitely. Now most of my game finds are nowhere near as good as that Brigadine for four bucks. I mean, I normally pay roughly what the eBay price is or maybe a little bit less if I get a good deal at the flea market or something like that. So that was pretty rare. Um, but this one I definitely didn't get for anywhere near four bucks. Um, it is probably probably the most expensive as of right now, like what it's going for on eBay, a uh, game that I own. And it is a uh, Little Samson on the original Nintendo. Um, really good condition. It's just the carts. I don't have the box or anything. You know, I fucking sell it and buy a new car if I had the box and instructions and everything. But um, yeah, I uh, I had waited a really long time to even think about getting this, um, and I finally just you know bit the bullet and said my NES collection sort of sucks in the sense of you know some of the more rare quality games, and I went ahead and grabbed it. Um, when I did, it was not as expensive as it is now, though. I think it was the high end when I got it was around like the two hundred and fifty, two hundred and seventy dollar mark. Now the high end's around like the three seventy five, four hundred dollar mark for like a buy it now price. But um, yeah, so very very glad to have it. Very very afraid to play it or do, <laughs> do anything with it. But um, it's a very good game. If you never checked it out, check out some videos on YouTube or you know, uh, some r reviews from people, and it's it's a great uh, action pl platformer. So, yeah, yeah, expensive, really expensive. Now, Pikmin 2 um, is getting harder to find now that uh, GameCube games are no longer accepted as trade-ins at GameStop. Um, a copy of it can go anywhere from, like, high 30s all the way up to $60 or so on eBay. It sort of has a wide price range right now. Um, but... Uh, back when they re-released the first Pikmin on the Wii, um, they were going to also do this with uh, Pikmin 2, but it just never happened for us. So the only way to get Pikmin 2 is on the GameCube. 
Um, so I think that's going to just help it gain value, you know, throughout the years to come now. This next one, um, a fellow YouTuber, P. Cola Sparky 86 um, had asked me a question if I own this game on another video, and I did, and they had said they'd been wanting it for a while, but the price of it um, was just too much uh, for a Game Boy game, and I didn't even realize that it had gotten that expensive. Um, it is Resident Evil Gaiden on the Game Boy Color, and I, I mean, I think I bought it when it was like 8 or 10 bucks or so used um, at GameStop, and it goes for around 40 or 50 bucks now on eBay, um, making it sort of one of the harder to find Resident Evil games, definitely. And uh, it's a unique Resident Evil game. Obviously, on the Game Boy Color, it's going to be pretty different than the other ones on other consoles. Um, it has a uh, th over the top sort of view of uh, your character running around on the screen. And then when you go into battles, you go into a first person mode. And um, at least with like the knife fights, like a, if you just have a knife, uh, there's a little bar that bounces back and forth, and you have to constantly, you know, hit it on the correct little section to actually perform strikes. And it, it's almost with the music that's playing, it's, it's sort of you know super intense, and it almost has like a, a rhythm base to it. It's sort of weird, but um, yeah, Resident Evil Gaiden on the Game Boy Color. This next one comes from one of my favorite game series, the uh, Shin Megami Tensei series and it is Digital Devil Saga uh, Part 1 and 2. Now this is the special edition box set that came with Part 1 and it had a bonus soundtrack, a larger than normal instruction booklet, and uh, this special box. And the box was big enough that once uh, Devil Saga Part 2 came out you could put it in the box with it. Here you can see it's you know big enough to fit both. Um, I bought this new for probably about 30 bucks or so, and I had purchased it actually after the second game had already come out, um, so it was still kind of cool to be able to find this in the stores at that time. Um, now, right now, the almost all the Shin Megami Tensei PS2 games have uh, gone down in price a little bit. They just seem to, you know, they always go up and down a little bit depending on uh, if a new like, Persona has come out or something, but... Right now, they seem to be on the lower end um, from where they have been over the last few years. This uh, box set complete with both games and in good condition, and the soundtrack. Uh, the soundtrack always seems to be missing on the ones I find on eBay. It can go anywhere from $50, $60, 70 or so. Uh, it just depends. I mean, I remember at one time seeing this for about 100 bucks, and you, know, you could probably still find someone asking for that, but it ain't going for that <laughs> right now. Hopefully the Shin Megami Tensei games will go back up in price, um, you know, over the next few years or, you know, down the road. Um, but obviously I'm not going to uh, get rid of them and uh, keep them in really nice condition. But I'm a big fan of all the creepy, weird-ass <laughs> Shin Megami games. The uh, next game I have is the rarest game I own on the Genesis, and it is uh, Musha. It's definitely well known to Genesis fans and to uh, Shoot'em Up Bullet Hell fans. Um, it's always been expensive. It continues to seem to be become more and more expensive. I only recently got my copy within the last year, um, and it's I think besides the um, KO Flying Squadron, it's the most expensive shoot 'em up I've ever purchased myself. This one is Blaze and Blade Eternal Quest on the PS1. Um, only came out in Europe and Japan. And uh, back when I was over in Europe and I was starting to collect the European English released games, um, I was doing some searching on like GameFacts.com and was just trying to find other you know games I, that I've never heard of, um, so I can maybe try to look for them and pick them up over there. Well, I found this one um, on GameFacts and I wrote it down, <clears throat> looked in a few more stores, and I couldn't find it. And when I got home, I looked on eBay, and there was like one or two copies up on the, uh, you know, UK eBay. Um, I bought it. Cool. Uh, I think I only, I think I paid like 35 bucks, you know, US for it. Um, it's not really probably an expensive game, especially if you live over there. It just seems to be trying to find some of these UK release games, like, and, you know, like, if, if you're like, oh, I, w I would like to get that game now. You, you sometimes have to wait. Um, like, I can't find a actual copy on the PS1 right now for sale. 
Um, the only one that a little while ago I found was just a disc copy. There's the Japanese ones, some on there. There's like a, uh, one for the PC. Um, and then on the PS2, there's a game just called Eternal Quest. But, um, so yeah, it's probably, you know, not expensive. And if one pops up and someone's only asking 10 bucks for it or something like that, you know, you could find it. Or you could, you know, get a good deal on it. But just, it's finding, you know, some of these more obscure ones. Um, it's just a good action RPG, apparently. Um, I can't play it right now. Um, but, uh, hopefully that'll be, uh, taken care of down the road at some point. So, um, caught my eye. And I'm trying to build up my European collection, so I'm happy to have this. Alright, and for the grand finale, uh, this last game I have looked for for a long time. Um, the few times I've seen it, even online for sale, it either is not complete or not in that great of condition, or the box sucks. Um, but one popped up a few weeks ago, and it was a little bit more than I would wanted to have paid for it. Um, but between going back and forth, asking, you know, uh, for maybe a little bit better of a deal or what we could do, um, the guy finally offered basically free priority shipping from Europe, which, you know, is 15, 20 bucks or so off. So that's not bad. Um, now, like I said, this game I looked for for a very long time and to find this in a good condition copy was, you know, was just not going to happen. So I did pay a fair amount for it, and it is uh, Kayo Flying Squadron 2 on the Sega Saturn. Um, I just showed in my last video, in the Rare Games I Own video, that uh, I have Kayo Flying Squadron on the Sega CD, and I had an interesting story of when I got that one. This story, not as interesting. Just finally bought it and got it. Um, it is immaculate condition. The disc is perfect. The instruction manual is perfect. The case is very good. Um, like I had said for uh, Parodius when I was showing that one um, on the Sega Saturn, they're just, um, they're, they're not much. I mean, the, the cases are just the, the cardboard, paper cardboard outer sleeve isn't protected by anything. And then it's a really thin plastic. Uh, so, I mean, to even get them just not smooshed is great. Now, the side spine has a few wrinkles in it. Um, but there's no, you know, major tearing or, or peeling or anything like that, so definitely one of the crown jewels in my collection now, I guess you could say. That sounded cheesy, but whatever. I'm very happy that, you know, I was able to finally get a copy of it. It literally means I need one more, uh, English-released shoot 'em up um, and that would be Magical Chase, and who knows, someday I might find that one, uh, <laughs> but... I'm not paying thousands of dollars for that goddamn game, so we'll see. Maybe I'll find it in a fucking shoebox at a flea market or something like that. That would be awesome. So, thank you for watching, guys. Um, again, subscribe to me if you have not. You know, thumbs up, comment, uh, all that kind of crap. Thank you very much. Talk to you later. Peace.